at Exxon with fast fuel systems and today we're talking about conditioning a fuel for the cold weather temperatures. And here on the table I have two kits laid out. I have an electrical heat over here. And if you want double electric heat, we can do two units on our kits. We can also do coolant heat and or both. On my truck I have both. Before we start with this, I've been able to start at 17 below zero with no additives and straight number two fuel. I've been able to run down to minus 40 degrees below zero without any additives also with the heater going, or heaters. Hopefully this year I'll be up in Alaska and you'll be seeing videos of that. But if you go to our website, fastride.com, F-A-S-S-R-I-D-E.com, you'll be able to see those videos of doing a cold weather testing. What we're going to start off with is our electric heat first. On the titanium unit, primary port for electric heat is right above the water separator, right below the T block. We call it, it's an upside down T. Take this plug out HDs are in the same spot. That's a 3 8 inch plug and on the HDs in your kit is a brass plug that looks like, looks like this. But for the titanium it's this plug here. And when it comes to sealing up plugs I like to wrap it about three or four times with Teflon tape. And I do it in a manner that when I put it on it's rolled in a direction, so when I screw this in and tighten it up, it's rolling with the tape, not against it, trying to untape it. And I've never, I should knock on wood, had one leak, fuel, antifreeze, anything. Take this, insert it in here, like this. Go ahead and tighten this up. Wrench it down and get your wrench. Go ahead and tighten this down. Take your electric heater. Do the same thing. Wrap it three or four times. It's not going to hurt. Put this in here. For, for timing today, I'm not going to tighten them up with a wrench. Okay, I'm just going to hand tighten them. These both have three, uh, you know, three to four rounds of thread tape on them. Grab your electrical harness, plug in the Deutsch connector, run this up, run the relay on the firewall somewhere where it's out of the way of spray, direct spray, water, moisture, things like that. Wouldn't hurt to put some dielectric grease in here at that time. Take the relay and plug it apart, put some dielectric grease in there. Take your red and green wire here that runs to your battery. Use our terminals that we have in there. Crimp them on, positive ground. And then we have an adifuse. Your trigger wire goes to the adifuse, crimp it together, plug it into a fuse that's hot when you turn your key on. This probe is temperature sensitive. And please keep fuel in here because if you have this probe on and there's no fuel in there, it's just like a hot water heater. If you turn your hot water heater without water on it, it's going to ruin your hot water heater. Same thing with these probes. What I like to do with this though, instead of plugging it into my ignition switch, you know, fuse somewhere, I like to go out, I, got my, I get my switches. I like to have a light on it, but I like to be able to turn that switch on and off manually. That way when it's extremely cold, I can go out and turn it on and let the heat radiate through the whole filter system, through the base and everything. Let it get all nice and toasty for those extreme cold weather starts that I want some added, added insurance. And let that heat radiate and start. Now if you're go where, where it is really cold on the extreme starts, you can take this plug out where it's right next to this R here. 
and we can heat fuel there. So do the same thing here. And these relays are hard, you know, if you're creative enough and you wanted to call our tech department, and they'll help you out. You can wire these harnesses in together off of one switch like I have in my cab. Now, we just talked about the electric heat. Let's talk about the coolant heater. And let me unplug this and pull this out just for ease of handling this. And what I like, we have coolant ports next to the return here. It's marked with letter H for heater and heater. It has to be a high pressure and a low pressure. That way it'll flow through and it doesn't matter which way it flows. I like to do it off my, um, my heater core lines. So on my heater core lines, I go up, I have some 5 eighths line, coolant line. I run them off my coolant line and my heater core lines underneath the hood, I run them down. And I've assembled what we have here, a bunch of brass pieces. And I use all half inch tubing and again, put about three or four rounds of thread tape on here in the direction that won't roll off when you screw it in. Put this in your fitting here. This is all half inch fittings. You can use whatever size you have available. I like using 5 eighths because it distributes heat back to the fast very efficiently. And I've been able to run down to 40 below, so we've been doing something right. And I'm going to put this together real quick. Imagine thread tape on all these. Three to four rounds of thread tape. Let me see if I can get this threaded properly. And it feels like it's wanting to cross on me. And I'll, I'll cover this in just a minute. I'm going to uh, flip the titanium out. I've already uh, um, pulled these red plugs out, out of here and here where the H's are. I put a 90 in back here with thread tape again. Name this fitting in the direction that you need. This is 3 8 pipe thread, by the way, in here and here. Okay. Now what we have, we have the engine compartment up here. We have two lines coming down. As you can see, there's thread tape on here. And what we have is a junction block. That way, in the winter time, we can have the coolant line coming in here, coming out of here, straight into either port into here. And I'll go ahead and I'll hook that up and we'll come back and then you can see exactly how this is plumbed into here. As I'm finishing up here, just torquing it down. You'll want to give it more torque than that. And about have it wrapped up on this junction block down here. Now these lines that I'm getting ready to put on right now, these coolant lines, let's go ahead and just, these would be running up to your heater core. This is one area, uh, it's a side benefit to the air separation and the way that we're doing the mass flow return. As we sit there and polish the fuel over and over, separating the air out and polishing the dirt and water out, makes a great heater because as this coolant comes down from here, 
right now, the way that we have this valve here, the coolant comes down, it can be high pressure or low pressure, passes through here and we have this one, this valve closed so it doesn't bypass and come back, comes into the side of the fast, either side, goes through and it heats up this whole block. And with the mass flow return and the return fuel coming through here and the way that we're polishing it, makes a wicked heater. Then it comes out the other end, you know, it doesn't matter which way it passes, comes up here, travels back up your heater core. Now, you only need this in extreme cold. When it's warmer, close this valve and open this one. That way it comes down from your cool, your source, high pressure, low pressure from your heater core. This is shut off and then it bypasses and comes back up. I like to mount this under the cab, on the frame, anywhere. I can get the mine without having to get underneath. I can reach up, turn the valves. I have this all supported right here. And this is up on the truck. But you can get a visual idea of this. Now, I have this coolant line for my heater core. I have this heater in here and one in here. I can manually control these. I don't have a problem with gelling. Started at minus 17 below zero. We're going to see how cold we can go next year. And I've ran at 40 below. With this coolant line, when I had my temperature gauge in there for my fuel temp, at minus 27 to minus 30, it's in that 47 to 40 degree temperature range in the fuel tank. Keeping it plenty warm so you don't gel going down the road. Again, I do thank you for your time and go look at the other videos on fastride.com and learn more about our product. Mm -hmm.